Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we do the final assembly. Welcome back everyone and we are going to be working on the uh, weapons platforms and the pods and everything now here for the uh, walker okay so working on the gun the main gun that comes underneath there Okay, um, before I get anything done here, I want to get the rest of this put together. Okay, let's get the rest of those weapons on there now. Okay, so we just finished that there. And I'm going to work on the side uh, weapons pods that go on the side of the body here.
Yeah, now we're on the last little bit here for that side. Now, I didn't glue it because I want to be able to articulate it in different angles. There we go. I still have to weather it and all that yet. Um, but I will do that eventually. Now, I had a thought about the stand here. I will utilize this, but it's going to be utilized in a larger uh, base that I'm going to make for it. I just need this to hold the uh, model in position. There we go. All right. Now I know they don't have the imperial symbol on it, but uh, mine does. Just because I think it should have it. All right. Now I'm going to get on with the diorama uh, where this model is going to be placed into. Just going to use simple styrofoam here. It's easy to mold and sculpt. So I'm kind of thinking... Maybe having it like, like it's coming in to a little, an area here or something like this. And then these here be like here. I'm going to make this into a sloping hill, like a hill line. And maybe a smaller one over there, like a small hill here. And there's like a trail or something coming through here. Um, and I'm going to have it firing its lasers this way. And I'll show you in a little while exactly what I mean and how I'm going to do that. Um, this here will be sunk down into the uh, styrofoam a little bit. So this will be level with this. And then I can add dirt and bush and everything else down there. Um, now for Chewbacca here, I'm thinking maybe he would be like up, no, nope, not falling down, be like up on a hillside up here behind a big rock or something like that. And he's watching the, uh, at, at, or at ATSD, um, maybe like on in here be like a hidden trap or something like that when it's coming along a trap would spring or something i don't know um something like that but right now i'm going to work on uh, like i'm going to glue these sections here in place and then after that i'll just use uh my dremel and shape and curve the landscape the way i want um and then i'll, I'll i'm going to draw out an area around here where I want this to be sunk down probably like right in here um it's too bad I didn't have a bunch of little Ewoks that'd be cool from the hobby shop here I got a bunch of shrubs and trees and stuff like that I can use for foliage and I got this really fine sand and and, and grit that I can use for the ground that the ad at or ATST is walking on. So the first thing right now is just to get these glued in place and then take it from there. Okay, uh, let's see, maybe coming out to the area right about here. Like 
so that's where it's going to be sunk down a little bit just to get this flush with this level here all right so actually this is going to be down a little bit lower yeah okay um so i'm just going to get this glued in place here set before I can start doing any cutting um, so what I want to do is I'm gonna cut it down fairly low because um, what I'm gonna do with the laser lights um, that'll be coming um, this is a little bit too thick here for it so I'll be cutting it down in an area like this. And then kind of like making a pathway here between two hills. This might not be big enough, but I think I can still work with it. Like I, I can cut a majority of this right out of here. Like I have a hillside coming up on either side. And then fairly flat down here for this. Uh, it's really nice and light, so it's good. All right, just gonna let that dry now. Okay, the glue has had time to set now. I'm just gonna sketch out how low I want this ground to go. It's probably. Coming down and then sort of coming up to a higher elevation up here. Yeah, like a like that. Alright, let's get this all cut out now. Got my bar wall.
something like that. It looks pretty good. Not bad. Alright, now on X, I just need to mark out here where this stand is going to be sunk down into the display base. Now to go cut that out. Perfect. Looks good. All right. Not bad. Just be pushed forward a little bit there. I'll just put a little bit of stuffing on the back corner there. A little little bit of that there with some glue. That'd be perfect. Yeah, not bad. It's getting there. Okay, uh, before I do any more work on the diorama and adding those effects that I'm going to show you, to make this thing look even more realistic. I am going to weather the model. So I got my weathering pens here and I got this neat little thing here for adding weather and dirt look on it. It's uh, the Tamiya Weathering Master. So you can get uh, all the stuff on there. It even shows you what it looks like. Snow, soot, rust. So, uh, the, the little applicator here, the end here, wears out pretty fast, but they, they come with uh, where you can buy these online or at your hobby store if it carries them. Um, so, uh, one thing I need to do though is I'm going to be like chip away at the logo here, like some of it was worn off and stuff. And along the edges here, I'm going to make it look like the underlying metal which is shining through. Uh, just on the edges and kind of rough it up around the the edges here and scuff marks Maybe even a couple of look like blaster hits on there uh, Let's get that started Now as a reminder on here I did not glue the the top down because I wanted to be able to have the option to take this off To reveal the inside the interior so you could see the the pilots and all that stuff So um, To scuff up actually okay um, <clears throat> did a little bit of research on on weathering the decals um, so I like to do a little bit of research on stuff like that just so I can understand a little bit more normally I, I like my models like they came right off the factory floor kind of thing but for this one here, it looks like this thing's been out in the field for a long time. It's been lots of battles. So one way is once you have the decals covered in, in a clear coat and it's well covered, actually, I'm gonna get the better. I'm gonna get one of these. Uh, pretty rough, rough hard grit and just slowly go on the, uh, the decal. Just, just to break it down a little bit. Okay. 
and it uh, it it darkens down or it lightens up certain areas of the decal with age. Certain areas of the uh, the imperial symbol is worn away. So it's starting to starting to look good there, because there was there was a on, on the on the box there it you can see there was a a, a laser blast hit. So it's going to be like in this general area, but I'm not going to use the decal that came with the model kit. I'm going to use this here. Now, yeah, I got this applicator I can use, but I also, you can use just an average Q-tip as well. So I'll probably use the Q-tip because the head on it is smaller than that, and I need it smaller. I got uh, just a little bit this, a little bit there. And just. And it, and it roughs up the metal a little bit as well, the metal look. I get really scuffed. So I'm going to go along here, along the corners. Just to wear it off, wear the paint off in certain areas along the corners. And I'm going to... I'm going to put that, a rust color along the corners. A little bit along the top. It's like this. And you can see the getting the corners along there. And you can see the, the the wearing away of that. So the the blast is gonna gonna go up this way, like the laser blast that hit the hull or the armor. Wear down the corners here a bit. Some areas more than others, not not the entire thing. <sighs> I'm gonna do the same thing here with the small decal here. That's where I need my glasses so I can actually see up close because it gets so small. I don't want to do the entire deco, just some of it. There, just like that. Let's see, this in here a little bit, I'll just darken, lighten this one up just a little bit. Another way to uh, make the decals lighter is to um, use the base color paint that you used to do the model and just very lightly spray over the decal which will lighten it up and blend it right into the uh, metal frame. Same on here, just to lighten it up a little bit, don't take it completely off. A little bit on here. pretty rough now. That's good. Uh, 
Now I'm using a lighter grit for just a bit less of an effect on the rest of the, I just wanted the, the heavier one on the main decal here. Just picking out there are certain spots where I want the wear and tear to be. And then I can use the uh, use the lighter grit, smoothen it out just a little bit, blend it in to the paint. A little bit of wear and tear here on the legs. like that. And I'm going to use this really light one here to blend this in so it doesn't look like I scratched it. It actually looks like it's normally it was in the weather for a long time. <sighs> Make it nice and smooth. This is really, really fine grit. There we go, just like that. All right. Um, a little bit on the feet here. Since like uh, the feet are on the ground most of the time, they should be like really, really dirty and scuffed. And, and so I'm just using a really fine grit on the feet itself. And the, the, the high points that you see on the feet here, like they got these uh, little ridges along here. I'm gonna scup off a lot of the paint off the tops of that. really hard to tell but it's it's like the metal is worn away it's damaged that kind of thing now I'm going to use this here to make it look like there was blaster damage on on the front here okay so I'm gonna use a toothpick here a little bit here to the black on there just very lightly it's the main point here where the blaster hit just a, up yeah don't 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 do that and then a little bit off shoots on the sides here Right up into the decal. Okay, now I have a pen here to get finer details on. Got a lighter color here for the outer edge. this, the clean side, blend it together, so you got that look like a blaster hit, <clears throat> I 
Now I got a rust color here. I'm gonna go along the edges here. Now you can also paint it on with, with a nice rust color. Um, water it down just a little bit with your uh, um, paint thinner. Because you don't want it to go on really thick. Uh, this, this here, this way here is just a little bit quicker. Well, for me anyway, that's what I find. Okay, now you got, it's really hard to see with this camera. For here, because it's larger, and I'm gonna drag it down. Get a little bit of rust dripping down the sides here. Gives it that really rough look to the weathering. Looks good. And then on the back here, have it coming down. Some points here where it's a little bit darker, and other points where it's not so dark. Just like that. Here, a little bit on the feet here as well, on the, the high ridges here where I took the paint off. Now on the feet here, there's going to be a lot more of this wear and tear because they're like on the ground all the time where you get most of the damage or the, the wear and tear look. more on the is where it's covering up the areas here where the paint was almost all scraped off and then the area here you pull down for gravity is pulling the rust down like the water running off the foot onto the ground along where gravity is pulling it. Uh, it's the applicator here. This applicator here is a little better than a Q-tip, but the they run out so much faster. So it's possible you have, you probably go through a lot of these. Which is why the Q-tip, I mean, it's still going. The, the, the foam on here is just so soft, it rips right through it. Now the, the base here itself, I'm going to put over top of this you know, like regular dirt so you won't, you won't see the plastic on here at all. Okay, I'm 
going to use. A little black here for the wear and tear look of it. Major areas here. Just to give it that scuffed look. Get that really scuffed, dirty look. Get this like this. This walker's been in a lot of battles. Had a lot of repairs. And then use the, the leftover look on there just to very lightly go over the model just to give it that really well worn used look. So it's 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 light enough that it doesn't leave a whole lot of major um, wear look on it. Just just enough, just tap it and then smear it around. Don't don't make it look like it's all uniform. Make it random. Spread it around. Just to give it that look. Now I want to scar the paint here a little bit. Get some paint worn off in other areas. Okay. See, I got uh, a lot of battle damage there. That's a rust look to the model. Looks like on the top up here, took another laser hit. We got a few small hits up there. Got lots of wear and tear on the feet down there. On the legs. Come on, focus. There we go. See, this thing is uh, pretty much ready to go here. Looks like it's a pretty old machine now. A lot of battles. Looking good, looking good. And I got uh, Chewbacca up here. I'm gonna have like a, a rock or something up here, like he's leaning on it and he's watching the ATST. Now I'm going to move on to the effect that I want to make it like it's shooting its lasers and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. But that's all going to be in the next episode.
Please like, subscribe, comment, don't forget to share, and click that notification bell for any future uploads. If you have any questions, or you want me to do some commission work for you, contact me at epic.models at gmail.com. And please check out my website, www.epicmodels.com. In the next episode, we will be working on the lasers. See you all again later. Bye-bye.